Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Monday, July 16th, 2018. Uh, it's a little after 3 o'clock Eastern Time, so as we head into the final hour of trading today, uh, let's take a look at the charts. I won't go into much detail. There's not a whole lot of new developments to note, but I wanted to cover a couple different points, talk about earnings real quick, look at when some of the big stocks report, and that kind of sets the stage for what to expect for the next couple of weeks here, which is going to be volatility in one direction or the other, most likely. So uh, this is uh, we'll start out real quick looking at the futures, 60 minute charts. This is ES, the S&P 500 E-mini futures. Uh, and, you know, that has a pretty clear pattern of the 60 minute divergent highs and lows. That's what I like to look for. You can see the divergent high right here, diver negative divergence down below on the indicators. Nice bearish rising wedge and a correction that terminated with a uh, divergent low, which is bullish. There's your positive divergences and we get a rally. And now we've come full circle here, bearish rising wedge, negative divergences, you know, everything highlighted recently. And we're, we've clearly broken down on, on the uh, ES. You can see that and it's just 60 minute charts. Uh, this covers goes back uh, quite a way so into or at least mid May there. So you can see we have several numerous 60 minute candles below there and the breakdown's clear. Let's flip over to the NQ 60 minute chart, which is the NASDAQ. And here's NQ. Uh, same story you had. NQs have been just more resilient, if you will. Uh, if you recall on that SPY chart here, if I can toggle between the two, uh, let's see if I can do that. Hold on. Here it is. I just wanted to jump back. You can see that ES broke down and had an impulsive breakdown back as I put the crosshairs here. That says March, uh, I'm sorry, uh, June 1st right there. And didn't look back, you know, worked its way down. Whereas NQ, when we look at that one, uh, we had back on June 1st, we were right here. We were still within the wedge, actually, quite a ways. We worked our way up a little bit longer, broke down on June 18th, and then had a high-level back test. That's resiliency, but the charts did play out. The divergences played out. Yes, we had divergences at the time the uh, ES broke down, but NQ just uh, had a little more life in it. And uh, that's been the story pretty much all year. Um, you know, it's those market leading FANG stocks uh, that have lifted uh, the market for the most part. So there it is. Uh, and I wanted to point out same story uh, either way. Just again, a little more resiliency in the NASDAQ 100. But you had your divergent high negative divergence with a correction, which terminated in a divergent low 60 minute divergences, my go to swing trading time frame. And that led to this rally. And now, uh, once again, we've come full circle. And just like back then, uh, NQ didn't break down, but uh, when the SPY did, I showed you the SPY broke down last week, but now NQ is finally broken down today. You can see us trading right here, that 60 minute uh, chart showing us below trend right now, uh, following the divergence high, divergent high. So we have the confirmed negative divergence breakdown. Not very impulsive selling yet, and that may, we'll see, we'll see what happens. I'm gonna go over the uh, earnings real quick on the big fang stocks. And uh, we'll see if the market kind of goes into a holding pattern um, heading into the earnings, or maybe there we'll see um, some selling. I doubt looking at these charts, we're going to see a lot of buying before then. So my most optimistic scenario, most bullish scenario right now would be a, a somewhat of a sideways trading range uh, over the next couple of weeks, maybe come down here. I think we'll come at least to this level here. Um, and again, that's my most optimistic. We can certainly see this chart play out. This is my. This would be a swing target down here right now. On um, if you're an NQ trader, about 71.60, 71.62. I can put a nice uh, support line there. You can see it right here. A lot of reactions along that way. So there's some potential targets. And now let's jump over to the QQQ. I know uh, a lot more. Uh, retail traders out there trade QQQ, and I get a lot of requests to, uh, sometimes I'll get buried in the charts of the futures. Um, and and uh, so I'll, I'll try to make a point to always update and give you comparable levels on QQQ. So here it is. What we've seen uh, as of today now, we finally have a confirmed sell signal. You know, it was expected last week. We even added the Qs on as an official short trade last week. Um, and this is the confirmed divergence now I was looking for. So we do have on the QQQ 60 minute time frame, we had it first on NQ. Now we have confirmed negative divergence. And by that, I mean, we have a uh, bearish crossover on the PPO that came below the previous 
a high, reaction high. And that is, in my book, at least what confirms that divergence. So there it is, confirm negative divergence, divergence on the RSI. There's your rising wedge pattern, and here's our breakdown. Uh, again, the selling is not very impulsive so far, and it may may not turn out to be. Uh, we'll look at uh, we'll look at uh, who's reporting and when here in a second. And I just want to show you some potential targets. You have a couple reaction highs there to look at. But ultimately, I think we work our way down here. These are the same targets I've maintained for the last week or so here. I think we can work our way down quite likely to this 173.55 level, um, but my minimum target would be about 175. So if you're a dip buyer looking to buy the dips, you might want to step in there. We'll just have to see how things develop. And remember, keep in mind, things are going to be choppy. Let's just jump out to the uh, daily charts and take a look here. Um, and we'll look at earnings on some of these big components. Uh, this is, the, in a nutshell, what the QQQ looks like. Here's a clean version. This is a long-term uptrend line to watch. And this is that rising wedge pattern here. You can see it. This is a daily chart. So there's our divergent high. Uh, PPO is still pointed up on the on the daily time frame, and meaning the momentum is to the upside. This trend indicator, the white line, the 9 EMA, is still above the zero line. So there's some work to be done to firm up the bearish case. But Again, uh, divergent highs like this more often than not result in a correction. And this is the more significant daily time frame. I showed you targets on the 60 minute chart a minute ago. Um, if you take the widest part of the wedge, which I've done here with this trend line, add that to where it breaks down. Let's just assume that it breaks down somewhere around this point here. It brings me right down to that target uh, here. This is a potential swing target. More importantly, a very, what I think, critical resistance, or I'm sorry, support level around 152, 153, somewhere in there. And that, again, is defined by the uh, all the lows that we had in those two big corrections earlier this year, as well as some consolidation around that level right there. So if we take out those lows from earlier this year, uh, you may want to get out of Dodge. We'll see what happens at the time. But, you know, as I say, the charts are dynamic, and so is my analysis. Maybe we break below there, and there's some strong divergences in place, bullish divergences, and we get a little washout move to wash out some shorts and uh, or maybe suck in some more shorts, wash out some longs. We'll see. We'll have to just take it as it comes. But as of now, this is bearish posture. I don't care to chase these. And this, and we'll just wrap this up with the... Uh, a look at the big top components of the uh, NASDAQ 100. I did a, a detailed video covering the outlook on these the other day, or last week, I should say. But I wanted to highlight, this is what we need to watch for. This is what's going to most likely dictate what the markets do over the next couple weeks. Um, because these are, again, I go over the top components of the QQQ, and that makes up well over half. We're just going to look at a few of these. Here's Apple. It's reporting Tuesday, uh, July 31st. After the market closes, that's the uh, daily chart there. You can see the most recent divergent high. Uh, Apple's been sort of stalling out recently. Uh, there's a 60-minute chart with negative divergence right now on the 60-minute chart. And again, sometimes these stocks will go into a holding period in front of earnings. And sometimes they'll, you know, it, it can go the other way. Sometimes you start to see... Uh, traders exit a stock in front of earnings if they don't think the earnings are going to be good, especially those in the know. Remember, insider trading uh, is only illegal in the sense where you act on, on non-public information, but there's a lot of insider trading that goes on that's illegal. The insiders, those in the company, you know, they if they think they're going to have a bad quarter, they, you know, they might be uh, unwinding their stock. And of course, there are those, you know, whispers on the street as to what may happen. But again, let's not get too complicated here. Let's just watch price. We can sit here all day long and try to guess what's going to happen. Um, but uh, we have you know, a couple weeks to go before Apple reports. Amazon, Thursday, July 26th. Uh, so we have a little time, about 10 days there. And this one's working its way up within this bullish uh, wedge. Everybody loves Amazon. It's Amazon Prime Week or Prime Day, whatever that is. Um, you know, unless this pattern is foiled, and that's possible, we don't have a sell signal yet, not anything even remotely close to a sell signal. Uh, somebody in the trading room commented on this other day. I, you know, I'm care to short Amazon right now. This stock is in clearly in an uptrend, but it's at the top of this rising wedge pattern. Now, keep in mind, on a rising wedge pattern, this is the only line that. Uh, I don't want to use the term immutable, but for the most part, this line is set right now. You can see a lot of reactions. This is our uptrend line. The trend line on top is not a, a trend line for price. It's just a divergence line. So this can and will extend upwards if price continues upwards as long as these divergences remain intact. In other words, the PPO, which is a momentum indicator, is making lower highs. You can see that trend line has plenty of room for Amazon to continue to climb 
and keep these divergences intact. And until and less are taken out, meaning we take out this previous high, we still have potential negative divergence. But as you can see here, the momentum is up right now. So this may be setting up as a short trade. And watch, see what happens if it turns back down, confirms these divergences with a bearish crossover, but most importantly breaks below trend. Then you have a sell signal on Amazon and not until then. So let's see what happens there. Either way, I wanted to point out uh, that uh, we have a couple weeks before, or about 10 days on that one before it reports. Uh, Alphabet, this is Class A shares, G-O-O-G-L, uh, reporting on Monday the 23rd. So that one looks like it's coming up next week. One to watch, same story. I know uh, sometimes I'll hear a lot of frustration from traders. Oh, you point out these divergent highs, they don't play out. Well, they, they do play out much more often than not. Not always, but much more often than not. And sometimes they just have to, you have to extend the divergences. We had a divergent high right here recently at the crosshairs when alphabet tested the previous reaction high now we pushed above it so we basically if you look at this line here this yellow horizontal line uh we broken out today but what you're not seeing what you usually see on a breakout to new high see we tested that that reaction high there right there fell back came here and we broke out and now we failed so the breakout number one was very lackluster not very bullish break out to new all-time highs you should see the buyer step in you didn't see that here in fact you saw them sell into it not the end of the world because this isn't an impulsive move down and again as i said who wants to take a very big position on a stock that's very overextended but in a strong uptrend uh, but who wants to take a big position a week ahead of it so what i'm trying to get at is don't expect major fireworks be ready for anything. If you start to see impulsive selling before earnings, they break down, uh, you might want to take a short position ahead, but I just hold off on that for now. Again, uh, we'll know next week. So I guess what I'm trying to say is if this pattern's going to break down or we'll have a definitive resolution or Alphabet's going to break out the new all-time highs, maybe come in back to this and take off, that'll probably happen after they report next week. So you got to give it a little time. It's time to be patient. Um, but uh, every chart I look at here on these top components of the NASDAQ 100, uh, they look very toppy to me. Uh, the trend is still up, but they look toppy, and it's not a trend that I want to chase. I don't chase divergent highs. Um, there's better fish to fry. And again, that's why I do this market analysis. It's free to the public. Trade ideas, individual stocks are where you know most of the money has been made lately on the long side and short side. These these FANG stocks are just limping up. They're moving higher, but not, not very impulsively. Um, they're just kind of grinding their way up, as that's what everybody wants to own right now. Thursday, July 19th, that is uh, just in a couple of days, Microsoft will report. Microsoft, again, being one of the top components. These are the two trend lines to watch. Here was a minor trend line that was broken and being back tested now. There's your negative divergence, continues to build, and that um, gives me a intermediate term um, bearish outlook on Microsoft, as well as most of these leading FANG stocks. Uh, Facebook, Wednesday, July 25th. Uh, AMC, by the way, means after the market close. I think all these FANG stocks report after the market closes, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, there it is. You can see, you know, nice uptrend line right here. It was broken and currently being back tested along with in conjunction with this other long term trend line. And again, I did a video covering the FANG stocks last week, so I don't want to go too much into the technicals on those. Just really kind of highlight to map out where these earnings are coming out when they'll be reporting so once we're done here we have just a couple more i'll cover i'll go through maybe comcast two, three more and uh, i'm going through these in order of descending market cap by the way with apple being the largest and going down the line this is intel uh there's your bearish rising wedge breakdown and this looks like nothing more than a typical kickback rally you know stocks aren't going to fall forever and especially when this is one of the leading components of qqq and the q's are not all, far off all-time all high so uh that's what this one looks like to me right here uh, sooner or later and it reports thursday so about another 10 days so that's a big week that's a couple i think already on uh july 26 after the market closes so uh, just something to be aware of with your positioning, whether you want to hedge, whether, you know, it depends how aggressive you are. If you're aggressive, personally, I believe in the charts that if a chart pattern is clearly bullish or bearish, that is more often not the way the stock is going to head after earnings. Now, if the chart is not clearly bullish or bearish, 
then it's a crapshoot holding into earnings. That's the way I look at trading. So uh, it's up to you whether you want to hold positions into earnings, take a position in front of earnings, or just close things out, maybe hedge up. Uh, Cisco, uh, Wednesday, August 15th. So we have a while to go on Cisco. Looks like it's flirting with this support level right now. Uh, and uh, the earnings aren't going to save it anytime soon. It broke trend right here. So the posture of this stock to me is clearly bearish. It put in a divergent high recently at this point here. There was divergent high number one, correction one, divergent number high. I'm sorry, divergent high number two, correction two, hugged the trend line for a little and then gave up the ghost right here. Broke trend, came down to this uh, support level. And, uh, you know, you want to see a solid, close below that 4230 ish level and then take out that previous reaction low and that will open the door for more downside in cisco trend indicators bearish uh, so there's one that looks like it's already broken down and one of the top components of the nasdaq 100 netflix reports tonight after the close so well there it is bearish rising wedge divergent high uh, this is a stock to me that looks like it's going lower but it's at support right now at trend line support and it reports tonight and this stock has a pretty big uh, history of earnings surprise, big moves after earnings. So if you're long or short, just strap in and hold on because uh, I doubt the stock will be up or down only 1% or 2% over the next few days after they report tonight. More than likely, it'll move 5% or more in either direction. And based on the look of this chart, despite any initial reaction, I never jump over in the initial reaction, especially in after hours trading. Wait for a day or so for the dust to settle. Um, but uh, I think this one's coming down to at least that 332 level and quite possibly coming in ultimately to vis revisit this long-term trend line. You look at a weekly chart, here's a long-term trend line on Netflix. It hasn't visited in a while. Here's that little rising wedge shown here on the weekly chart. And that's where I think it's going after earn sometime in the following weeks or so after earnings. And finally, we'll wrap it up here with Comcast. Comcast, uh, this one I was bullish on recently, bullish and long. This one broke out right here. We had a, a nice, steep falling wedge, positive divergence, everything I like to see. Uh, there's some notes down there, deeply oversold. Um, and boom, broke out, back test, and moved up. However, this one's now at resistance. Oh, yeah, I should point out Thursday, July 26th. So about another 10 days, there's another one. That's, again, a big earnings date, uh, Thursday, July 26th, after the market uh, closes. A lot of leading, you know, top, weighted components in the NASDAQ 100, 100 reporting. So this one looks like it certainly met the measured target of the wedge. You just take the widest part of the wedge, add that to where the wedge breaks out. So it looks like we've met the measured target. It's at resistance. If it can punch through here, you know, just because you met the measured target doesn't mean it can't go any higher, but it's around 35 or so right now. That's resistance marked by some reactions in the past. Uh, if it can get through there, 37, uh, it might say 37, but again, uh, you're taking a stock that's getting pretty extended now and heading into earnings. So just something to be care, uh, careful for. If you own these stocks, just be aware when they report. Uh, that's it. Uh, like I said, we're you know going back to the 60-minute charts. We have broken down. Anything's possible, but uh, that puts the near-term uh, outlook for the market right now is uh, bearish. And again, that's near-term stuff. There's longer term. You have to take out trend lines that we uh, talked about and everything else. So right now I'm just looking for correction, although as always, there's potential for more. We'll just have to see how things go. And again, you're probably looking at some choppy trading in the next few weeks here until all these big guys get earnings out of the way. And then, uh, and then hopefully this market will pick a, a trend. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.